Welcome to a new vlog. I've been a happy user of Mixig test gear for the past couple of years. Uh, my first Mixig product, product was this uh, uh, current probe, it's the CP2108. And at that time it was really the best current probe uh, in this affordable price range and it could even outperform much more expensive alternatives. I did a review of this in Vollog 330 and like I said I've been using it happily ever since. And as explained in that video, uh, a current probe is not something that everyone needs, certainly not required for the average uh, hobby projects. It's more of a special tool that is used whenever you need to take a look at the current waveform and uh, you need to do that in a uh, isolated manner at a reasonable uh, bandwidth. That could mean looking at the current waveforms for various parts of a switch mode power supply circuit. Uh, it could be AC or DC. Uh, for example, the power factor correction circuit or the current waveform at the input of a particular load. Uh, measuring inrush currents or like in automotive, you would want to look at the waveform when uh, driving a fuel injector coil. You wouldn't use something like this for measuring the power usage of your low power microcontroller because you would be in the noise level of what this instrument can do. So that was a short introduction into oscilloscope current probes and I also have to mention that back then the Mixig CP2100A and the other variant CP2100B were considered high bandwidth probes at 800 kHz and 2.5 MHz respectively. Well, Mixig recently released a uh, newer model, uh, which is the CP503 that I have here for uh, review. And the unit has been provided by Mixig through their EU distributor LA Shop, which I highly recommend you check out if you're looking to order one of these in the EU. Uh, they were able to ship this to me very quickly via uh, local courier. A link to their website will be provided in the description below. So while we were considering the previous models of 800 kHz and 2.5 MHz uh, high bandwidth, uh, this newer series can go up to 50 MHz and 100 MHz, uh, depending on the variant you choose. So they really bumped up the bandwidth of this. Additionally, they have uh, two connection method uh, variants for this probe. Uh, you could have the more standard uh, uh, universal uh, BNC connection, uh, which uh, I had on the previous model uh, and that works with any oscilloscope input but now they also have this um, UPI interface with these uh, additional pins uh, and this is supported on their uh, newer oscilloscopes like the STO1004 which I reviewed in Vollog 438. Now before I continue with the uh, review of the uh, product let me mention the sponsor of this video. PCBWay.com is a professional PCB manufacturer with fast turnaround times and excellent quality but not only that you can also get your entire product manufactured by PCBWay because they offer services like PCB assembly, enclosure manufacturing, part sourcing so give them a try on your next order. The advantage of having this uh, UPI interface from uh, Mixig is that there are these additional data and power pins besides the uh, BNC signal connection and this means you can have active circuitry built into your probe calibration data. The, the scope can talk to the probe and read that calibration data and decide how to adjust scope parameters based on that. It can even read the uh, values that you set with the switches present on the probe itself. So in my case I have the UPI interface version because I also have their oscilloscope but you can also get it in the standard BNC interface which will work with any oscilloscope. Now as we notice the CP503 has a totally different uh, form factor, it doesn't have that alligator clip look anymore, it has the more standard uh, current probe that we've been seeing for years. Uh, I like both of these uh, form factors, I haven't seen any limitation with either, uh, but I'm sure that this uh, thinner one would work better for when you need to probe within some um, tight spaces. Uh, this one in particular is the CP503 model, which is rated for uh, 50 MHz, while the CP1003 is uh, rated for 100 MHz. But the difference between the, the two models pretty much stop at bandwidth, uh, which is huge even for the 50 MHz version. I mean, any kind of power supply system you might be working on, this will got you covered. Um, build quality is 
just as nice as with every other uh, mixi gear I, I've touched. Uh, the plastic feels uh, high quality, uh, cables are soft and nice, it just feels like a uh, high-end gear. Uh, the, the probe also comes with the um, uh, rugged uh, carry case. The case seems rather large for uh, such a small current probe, but I guess they just standardize on the size of the case, so maybe they use this same size for different uh, products in their lineup. In any case, it's, it's really nice that you get this uh, carry case included. In terms of specs, uh, this has two current ranges. So it's got the uh, 6 amp and the 30 amp uh, current range. Uh, DC accuracy is specified as plus or minus 1% plus 10 uh, milliamps for the 6 amp range and plus or minus 1% plus 50 milliamps for the 30 amps range, which is again a really nice spec. It can measure down to 20 milliamps on the 6 amp range and down to 50 milliamps on the 30 amp range. Noise is specified as better than 1.4 milliamp RMS at 20 megahertz. And the maximum working voltage is CAT1 300 volts. And you can probe uh, wires up to 5 uh, millimeter thick diameter in the clamp. So when you compare it to the uh, uh, previous model, uh, this newer one in terms of specs is better in pretty much every way. When connecting the probe to the oscilloscope, there is no particular locking mechanism other than some magnets uh, which make it snap together and the actual friction of the connectors, but it does seem to uh, stay in here pretty uh, tightly. Then immediately after uh, connecting the probe to the oscilloscope, you will hear some uh, relays and you will be uh, getting this uh, message on the oscilloscope screen if you are not connected to mains power. So right now I'm running on battery power and it says please connect the power adapter before using this function. So I'm thinking they are throwing this uh, warning message to the user because the probe is pulling power from the oscilloscope uh, battery which is going to drain it faster than what you would normally be used to. Uh, but they should allow you to cancel this this message so that you are able to use the oscilloscope even when on uh, battery power. For example, I may need to, you know, uh, do some debugging on some automotive work. So I take the portable oscilloscope with me. I take the current probe. I, I want to measure some currents uh, on uh, on the car, and it, it's just showing this message, uh, which I can't really uh, cancel. Now this seems like a problem for me. I'm not sure if this is a software bug. Uh, I, I will email them and see what they have to say about this. But in my view, even with the extra power usage of the probe, they should allow you to cancel this message and continue to use the probe as such. So after connecting the oscilloscope to uh, power, the message automatically goes away. And uh, like I mentioned, when you first connect the probe, you will hear some relays uh, clicking. So the scope is clearly talking to the probe. It's doing some uh, calibration and adjusting the, the range according to the uh, settings you have on the probe. And if we look at the scope screen, we notice that channel 1 was switched to showing current uh, units and it is set to the 6 amp range. Let me see if we adjust the range to 30 amps. Yep, that is automatically reflected on the scope screen. Uh, so it's really nice to have that universal probe interface where the probe just talks to the oscilloscope. You can also do manual degaussing and uh, zero offset adjustment by pressing both of the uh, buttons on the probe until the LED turns off. As you'll hear the relays now clicking and you see the trace going all over the place on screen. Now it has automatically degaussed and uh, adjusted its offset. Yeah, before starting any measurements, it is recommended to adjust that offset so that you have the trace right in the middle of your marker. Looking at just having the, the probe uh, sitting on my uh, desk and having it connected to the oscilloscope, I have my uh, vertical range to, uh, set to 10 milliamps uh, per division. I have my probe set to the uh, 6 amp range as indicated on screen. Um, and the noise level is pretty much one division, so it's in the 10, 10 milliamps uh, range, which again is not bad at all because you wouldn't use this to measure uh, such low currents. 
So here's a quick example of how you might use this probe. Let's imagine you have some kind of load with a dynamic current. In this case, it is simulated by my electronic load switching between one amp and two amps at some predetermined intervals. But this could be a really dynamic waveform. It can contain very complex stuff in there. And that's where the 50 megahertz of bandwidth comes in handy. As captured by the oscilloscope, you can clearly see how the current waveform looks like. Even that small overshoot that happens because the electronic load needs some time for the control loop to stabilize. And here's another twist to this example. If I introduce a problem in the system like the PSU limiting current at 1.5 amp, not allowing the load to pull the full 2 amps that it is being set to, well, we notice that there is an overshoot so the load can still pull more current for a brief amount of time before the power supply unit current uh, limiting feature kicks in. So having something like this current probe can uh, provide insight into uh, power supply debugging. It's really powerful. When paired with something like the uh, MixSig high voltage differential probe, you can view both voltage and current waveforms and they can be time correlated, which can be extremely useful for identifying when the current and voltage waveforms are not exactly synchronized, which is a uh, power factor problem in AC circuits. Another useful measurement is where you might want to test inrush currents for some devices. And you might say, uh, I have a min-max uh, function on my multimeter, uh, which uh, can do that. Well, let me show you the difference between the min-max function on your multimeter, which has a very limited bandwidth, usually in the kilohertz range, and the current probe, which works in the tens of megahertz. The test setup is comprised of this uh, switch mode uh, power supply unit, which is uh, feeding my electronic load, and we're doing the, the measurements on the AC line going to this uh, power supply unit. When turning on the uh, power supply, we should see an inrush current on the AC input, one that the multimeter should not be able to capture accurately. So here it is, the multimeter captured a maximum current of around 0.7 amps, while the scope through the current probe measuring at the exact same point on the AC line captured a peak of 9.7 amps, which lasted for a few milliseconds. Uh, showing also this really big negative spike. And stuff like this is just not visible with a multimeter that has uh, limited bandwidth. And that's why people who do power supply design or repairs or any kind of work where you need to look at the current wave waveform will most certainly want to own a current probe. And what Mixig is again bringing to the market uh, just two years after re releasing their other model is unprecedented performance and value for the money. This probe can be ordered for around 500 euros or US dollars depending on where you live. And sure, this is considered a lot of uh, money for the average hobbyist, but for professionals that are used to paying 4 to 5k for a similar probe, this is a real bargain. So if you're looking to get one, at least in the EU, I highly recommend you check out uh, LS Shop, which is linked in the description below. And if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to support me making more videos like this one, you can do it on my Patreon with as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.